Hi, I'm Jeremy Cowan, Editorial Director of IoT Now, and welcome to our latest quickfire video interview. We've got a special guest today. He's Jeff Willis, Director of Digital Engineering Transformation at Mercedes AMG Petronas Motorsport. Jeff, welcome. Good morning, Jeremy. Welcome. And Jeff, when people think of what makes a winning Formula One team, they probably think of engine designs and great drivers and aerodynamics. They perhaps don't think of digital twins, but Mercedes AMG does. So what's the reasoning here? Well, Formula One design really is a, it's a packaging, it's a trade-off and it's an optimization challenge. So we need to know about all of the components on the car and what all of the interactions between those subsystems are doing. And we need, particularly with track testing, to understand all the time exactly the configuration that we're testing so that we can correlate the data that we take from the track with our simulation models. So we don't run now what we might call a, a digital twin exactly, but we run an awful lot of the components of digital twin technology to give us that insight into, into what we're running. I see. So do you use simulation to test components and design changes as much as drivers? I mean, are there any metrics you can share that would show how much data is helping the team? Certainly, simulation is, is a real key point now because the level of refinement of these cars is way beyond the, the old days of trial and error or inspired or intuitive design. So it's all about hypothesis and then validating that hypothesis against data. So we rarely do anything unless we've got a good reason based on simulation for doing that. Now, of course, driver feedback and uh, driver intuition is an important part of that feedback, but we're fundamentally data-driven to try and validate the predictions of the simulation tools that we use. I see. So uh, I, I read somewhere that there can be over a billion different setup configurations um, in Formula One. How do you manage such a vast number? And is it done differently for every race, depending on the circuit and the weather and so on? You're absolutely right. We have a huge uh, range, a, a dimensionality of uh, things we can do with a car with a setup. Now, before we go to a specific event, we've got a good view from past data and from generic simulations of where we need the car to be operating. So we can reduce the space in which we're operating, but we still end up, particularly because of our knowledge, uh, our variable knowledge of tires, we end up needing to have a space of several thousands of simulations before we go to an event. And we use those to track the evolution of the, particularly the tires and the track conditions through the event to understand our setup generally in the context of the, of the changing environment that we're operating in. I see. Can you tell us a little bit about the work you're doing in visual analytics and data science with your partner, Tibco, and, and perhaps what's the role of predictive algorithms? Right. When we start to look at the data science projects that we're doing, I have to be a little careful because some of them are quite uh, leading edge for us in Formula One, even if some of the technology is a little bit more standard as far as our partners like, like TIPCO. Um, but we're using uh, vision analysis for uh, competitor analysis. We're looking at it for uh, tyre shapes uh, in, in operation. Uh, we're looking at other data from the tyres you can get in terms of their, their, their thermal data. So there's a lot of areas where we, we got large volumes of data and we're using machine learning techniques to try and reduce that data size and try and extract uh, the information that we can then turn into knowledge and correlate, of course, with our simulation tools. Jeff, it's in the nature of quickfire videos that they last all too little time. I could uh, talk about this with you all night, but thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much. Thank you, too, for joining us from around the world. Until the next quickfire video from IOT Now, bye for now.